is the See Jason podcast, and I am Lily Chan from the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Here with me to talk about our recent paper, Predictive Approaches for Acute Dialysis Requirement and Death in COVID-19, are my co-authors, Akhil Vaid and Girish Nakarni. Girish, perhaps you can start with the motivation behind our paper. Absolutely. Thanks, Lily, and hello, everyone. New York City was the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States. Initially considered a respiratory disease, we quickly realized that COVID-19 was more of a multi-organ disease with kidney as one of the most affected organs. AKI affected approximately a third of patients with COVID. The need for dialysis increased rapidly and we quickly developed strategies to manage the surge in dialysis need. We wanted to develop a tool to stratify which patients would require dialysis or die to allow for closer monitoring and institution of kidney protective measures. Akhil, can you describe the data analysis for the paper? Yes, of course, Karish. Thank you. And hello, everyone. So to achieve this goal, we used data from over 6,000 patients with COVID-19 who were admitted to one of the five hospitals in the Mount Sinai healthcare system. Patients who were admitted to the Mount Sinai hospital were used for training and internal validation, while patients admitted to the other hospitals were used for external validation. We trained five different models, a logistic regression, lasso, random forest, and an XG boost with and without imputation to predict the outcome of either dialysis or death at hospital days one, three, five, and seven. For these purposes, we only utilize demographic and clinical data collected within the first 12 hours of hospital admission. Of the different model approaches used, XGBoost without imputation had the highest area under the receiver operating characteristic curve and area under the precision recall curve on internal validation across all time points. XGBoost without imputation also had the best performance in the external validation set. Features of serum creatinine, blood urea nitrogen, and red cell distribution width were major drivers of model prediction. Akhil, can you talk about the benefits of machine learning and what XGBoost is? Machine learning is the application of algorithms that can understand patterns within seemingly unrelated pieces of data without being explicitly told what to look for. In a sense, it's a mathematical approximation of human reasoning and intuition. Now, XGBoost or extreme gradient boosting is one such algorithm. It combines the predictions of weak decision trees to achieve strong classification performance in high dimensional data sets. In addition to certain under the hood features such as concurrency and support for second order differentials, a significant advantage XGBoost has over other modeling approaches is that it can tolerate missing data without the need of imputation, and therefore it affords us easier deployment. In combination with per patient and per feature interactions as derived from Sharp scores, it allows for the appreciation of complex relationships within data. Our study should be considered in the context of several limitations. We only used admission data, and there are events following admission which will alter the patient's clinical course. While we used data from five different hospitals, they were all hospitals and patients from New York City. Additionally, during the surge, there was limited availability of dialysis, and patients who may have normally received dialysis may not have due to limited supply or staffing shortages. There may have been variables that are predictive of dialysis or death they were not included into our model because of the missingness threshold that we used. Despite these limitations, the XGBoost model without imputation had good performance on internal and external testing using admission data for prediction across several time windows. The ability to identify at-risk patients early in the hospital course has several benefits, including closer monitoring, early involvement of nephrologists, and earlier discussions with patients and families about care goals. I want to close by thanking the Clinical Journal of the American Society of Nephrology for highlighting our work with this podcast and the listeners for joining us on our discussion of our work. This podcast is copyrighted by the American Society of Nephrology, all rights reserved. All content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be medical advice. This podcast should not be used in a medical emergency or for the diagnosis or treatment of any medical condition. Please consult your doctor or other qualified healthcare provider if you have any questions about any medical condition or before taking any drug, changing your diet, or commencing or discontinuing any course of treatment. Thank you for listening to this podcast from the American Society of Nephrology.